Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome, 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 welcome to the Go Hire Job Hunting and Interview Masterclass. So for all my peeps in YouTube land, if you are excited to be here with us this afternoon, I need for you to type in the chat, yeah, yeah. Or better yet, type in the chat, we're ready. Because I know that there are a lot of persons who want the information that we have to share today. And of course, we are here to deliver. Now for today's session, we have some exceptional guests who are with us today. But before that, let me introduce myself. I am your host, Ruth Lawrence. And I have two beautiful, but guess what? Not only beautiful enough, brilliant experts who are gonna be sharing with you this afternoon. And they are Shanique Richards, and she is the CEO for Elevate Career Services. And we have Ms. Sharmonique, uh, Sharmonique Hines, and she's the CEO for the Interview Coach JA. Now, let me just give you a little bit of background in terms of what the session is all about. The session today, we're gonna to be looking at job, what are some of the job hunting tips, how and where to look. Anybody ever wondered at it? How and where, where do we really look for the job, right? We're gonna give you that information today. And we're also gonna be providing you with information in terms of how you can coin a competitive resume, all right? And of course, we're gonna be providing you additionally with information with regards to how to get prepared. Anybody ever nervous about them interview yet? Well, we are going to help to prepare you so the next time when you go into your interview, you're cool, as a cucumber okay all right and so we're gonna get right into it right now and of course before i go any further i want to add that the webinar is being hosted by the jamaica tertiary education commission in association with the youth innovation centers all right and so i'm gonna ask my two guests to introduce themselves but let me start first with miss shanique richard shanique are you there I am here. Can you hear me? I can, loud and clear. Shani, awesome. tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, Ruth. Thank you for having me. First of all, thank you for everyone who is joining. Um, as Ruth mentioned, my name is Shani, and I'm the CEO of Elevate Career Services, a platform dedicated to helping professionals navigate the job search. So resume writing, interview prep, salary negotiation, you name it, we could help you do it. Um, outside of that, I am a recruiter, hence the experience in doing resume writing and an operations manager. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shanique. Next up, we have Miss Sharmini Kynes. Sharmini. Hello. Hi. Yes, Hi. yes Hi. my Good afternoon. Afternoon, okay. everyone. All right. So my name is Sharmini Kynes. I am one of the CEOs of the interview coach, JA. Myself and my partner, Romaria Tensted, we started this together three years ago because we realized that there was a pain point in the industry in terms of young people getting jobs and going on interviews and properly preparing themselves to go into the work of world. Outside of that, I am a digital manager and I manage social media platforms, but part of my job as an interview coach is really to get young people ready and get others ready to really step into the world of work and to also create a professional resume. Awesome. So I guess both of you, you have your work cut out for you, right? In preparing persons for the perfect job. Yes, yes, we do. Awesome, awesome. So thank you so much, ladies, for that. Now, we're going to jump right into segment one of this masterclass. And we want to look first, the guys. We know that the interview process tends to be very, you know, it, it tends to be rough for, for many persons, especially if you're not used to it. But there is always a, a question that we are asked, usually asked in an interview. For example, tell us about yourself. Who are you? How do we navigate a question like that? Uh, any of you can possibly respond to that. All right. So let me go first, um, because during my sessions as an interview coach, I'm, a lot of persons always tend to get so scared with this question. I mean, it's the icebreaker when right. you're in an interview, it's what you're being asked first. So first for me, what I normally tell my clients, start by discussing your current situation. So if you're currently working, you want to talk about 
your current situation, explain your current role and highlight major relevant achievements and responsibility. Secondly, you want to work backwards. So by hitting key points along your professional journey. So summarize mm -hmm. previous work experience and how they've helped you to prepare for the role that you're currently applying for. Focus on results that can quantify where possible. Then thirdly, connect your background, your interests and your qualifications back to the job. So you want to finish by explaining how your experience will make you successful in the role and how the job aligns with your career goal. And just for that, I want to give you guys um, an example of what that will look like. The tell me about yourself. It can be for any type of position, but I realize that normally when people answer this question, they tend to give about some personal information, which is not the case. You don't want to tell the interviewer your marital status. You don't want to go into how many kids you have. You don't want to do that. Right. All right. So the way how you want to answer this, you want to say if you're applying for a job as a hostess, you can say, currently I work at seafood restaurant as an hostess i've been there for just about two years my responsibilities include greeting and seating customers assessing wait times fulfilling go to orders and answering the phone i love the lively and busy environment of seafood restaurants we often have friday and saturday wait times of an hour or more before working at seafood restaurant i worked in the retail as a floor associate for a year, this role really developed my customer service skills as I was consistently assisting customers in the store. It also equipped me with the ability to work in a team environment. So you want to mention that wow. you are team oriented, right? So I am looking basically to, what you're doing then, uh, Shamanique, is that you're linking back, as you rightly said, your experience. Right, right. Uh, you're with linking the back job with the current that you're job. For. Okay. Right. And when you're finishing, you're saying, I'm looking forward to further develop my customer service and problem solving skills as a hostess mm -hmm. in a restaurant environment. I'm interested in your restaurant specifically as it has a great reputation mm -hmm. for delivering first in first class customer service to your patrons while being in a lively and dynamic environment. So you want to always emphasize at the end of these questions how you want to work with the company that you're applying for. So you also just want to ensure that you're doing it within those three steps, ensuring right. that you are starting a discussion by explaining your current role, work backwards, and then you link back your previous work experiences to the job that you're applying for. Wow, that is awesome. Shamanique, I think you are, you're looking on my question sheet because you, you jumped to question number three that I had for you. And you spoke a little <laughs> bit, you touched a little bit a while ago in terms of the value that persons bring to the organizations to which they're right. But I want to pull Shanique in on this though, Shanique. What are your, what's your take? Because Shanique did give us uh, some really tangible points just now in terms of, how it is how it is that somebody you know any of us rather can share about ourselves whether it be our strengths or weaknesses experience etc how would you treat with a situation like this so everything Charmonique said was spot on right so right. you want to answer that question in three parts and i always tell my clients present past future wow. that's how you answer that question so those are the three steps in answering that question precisely what Charmonique said uh -huh. um, and as she said you want to mirror the job description when you're answering that question and by mirroring the job description it's pulling those skills that they're looking for and how do you match those skills so she hit the nail right on the head with that question Okay, awesome. Um, so ladies, tell me now, uh, now that we are in the job interview, let's just backtrack a little bit in terms of figuring out what do you want? What, what does the interviewee, what is it that they really want? How do you uh, come to the making that decision in terms of this is the job that would best suit me? How do I come up uh, with that sort of answer then? Um, so I'll start. So I think it has to do with, you have to do an assessment of your skills, mm -hmm. right? You have to one, assess your skills. What am I good at? What do I enjoy? What am I passionate about? Because a lot of times people find themselves in situations where they're just applying to any and everything, right? They're not even reading the job description. We're just applying to every single job we see open, but that's not the best way. The mm -hmm. first step in job hunting is creating a strategy. 
you need to figure out what skills you have. How can I package those skills? And how do I now tell people about those skills? So it's not about just applying to every open position. It's coming up with a strategy of this is what I'm good at. And these are the companies or jobs that I want to apply to. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Shanique. Uh, Shamanique, you... Right. Like so, I right. So I agree with everything that Shanique had mentioned. You have to know exactly what you want to do. You have to be able to sit yourself down and assess exactly where you want to go in terms of your career, in terms of your future. Because what you find out is happening a lot now is that young people are finding themselves in spaces that they are mentally drained, that they no longer want to be in, that they keep on resigning and then hiring again. And then it looks bad. Well, not bad. It looks off on their resume because it's telling me that you have no sense of stability mm -hmm. and you don't know exactly where you want to go. So you have to, again, assess your skills, see exactly what you want, and don't apply blindly to just positions all over. As Shani says, know exactly what you're passionate about, learn mm -hmm. to see exactly what you're good at, and then you can be able to find a job in your area. So these basically uh, are the considerations that every job seeker need, needs to bear in mind, basically. What are the skill sets that you have? How can you package those skills to make it appealing to the employers, right? But equally so, how can you articulate you know, your skills and your ability to the potential employer. So those are some really, really pertinent points that we probably need to listen or need to write it down. I only hope that if you're on this session right now, grab your pen and your paper and ensure that you're taking copious notes because at the end of this, I guarantee you, you shall graduate from the <laughs> best institution. <laughs> And that is to get the job, okay? All right, so basically that session we looked at a while ago was really to know yourself. The last question I want to add is, how can, uh, what value do you think uh, then, how can we identify the value that we add? You spoke about the skills, you, you spoke about packaging, but when we speak about value, that tends to be on another level. How do you assess the level of value that you bring to an organization? So um, I think you have to assess your accomplishments, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people get stuck. So you have two types of job seekers, right? You have the person who don't know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Then you have the person who is stuck in a job and that job is now their identity. They don't have an identity outside of that job. That's one of the biggest mistakes that we make as humans is we attach ourselves to a company instead of creating a professional identity. So you want to look at your accomplishments. What have I done in the past? This is what I'm good at. Those results is what you need to convey. Wow, I love that. I love that. And I, and I just really want to reiterate, reiterate rather what Shanique just said. She said um, to ensure that you create a professional, yeah. a professional uh, a personality, basically, or brand, rather, mm -hmm. for want of a better word. Uh, so when you leave, should you leave right. that space, persons can recognize that, listen, this is what you can bring to the table. Yeah. I, I absolutely love that. Shamanique, would you like to jump in on that? Shanique weighed in on pretty much everything um, that was said. I totally agree there you have to know exactly what it is that you're good at, what it is that you're passionate about and how you can correlate those two things should you leave that job and apply it to the next job that you are going into. Perfect. Listen, guys, you see, I told you that we have the experts in the house. We're not going to take notes, right? Okay. So, so we spoke, no, so that segment, no, segment one was really to know yourself. Now we are on gentle people to segment number two. And this, of course, is let the hunt begin. Listen, we are start look for the work. We are sending out the resume via, via email or we're dropping it off at the, the respective location. So the first thing I want to ask, the first question I want to ask is, where do you really look for a job? Where do you look <laughs> for a job? Well, personally for me, I, I always, and I always tell people LinkedIn is a top, networking site trust me linkedin is a top networking site that allows you to find a job 
not only through direct employers listing, but also through communication with your extended network. So if you're on LinkedIn, you know that your profile serves as your resume. So whatever it is that is on your profile, it serves as your resume and you can easily find and share career related content, dive deep into top leadership posts, from prominent people in your field and solicit or supply recommendations. Mm -hmm. So LinkedIn is a great, great um, website to go on. It's really professional. You will find out that you have a lot of professional people on LinkedIn. So even if you go on LinkedIn and you say you want to apply for a position at HRM Group or Ministry of Education, and you see Ruth Lawrence there and you said, you saw LinkedIn give you a notification. Ruth Lawrence has just completed her second work anniversary. LinkedIn gives you an option to say, congratulations, Ruth Lawrence. That's building a network there with Ruth Lawrence. Maybe there is an opening in our department where you can message her and ask her. Stuff like that matters, connecting with people and network networking. Locally, I know that I Need a Job Jamaica is also a wonderful platform. It's on Facebook where you'll always find legitimate jobs on it. So you can always look there too. Indeed is also a next job um, website that you can look on to find jobs locally and internationally. And also I know that Simply Hired, that is also another platform that you can look on. Shanique, you want to touch in on some? Yes. Um, so first thing I want to say, right, we all know about the traditional ways of job hunting, newspaper, Caribbean jobs, all the job boards, right? But I want everyone to bear in mind that 70% of jobs are not filled through the job boards. They're filled through what we call links, right? So yes, it is effective to apply to jobs via the newspaper, via Caribbean jobs, um, as um, Charmini mentioned, simply hired. But the best way to get a job is through networking. And Charmini touched on that on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a great tool for networking. So that's the quickest way, in my opinion, on how you could get a job is through um, networking. And it's not about the person that you know, it's about who they know. So don't just narrow it down to, oh, I'm gonna know nobody. Okay, but the people that you do know, they know people. And all they need to know is that you're job hunting. Um, so okay. that's one of the quickest ways for me. Um, and I always recommend making a LinkedIn profile and reaching out yeah. to people. Very, and and, and I also want to add, ladies, too, don't stop people on LinkedIn because oh. we've heard the stories oh. where persons just create the LinkedIn profile. And what you find is that they become overly forceful in you know can you get me a job and you know that's a turn off for people so i love what charmonique said earlier build learn to build relationship mm -hmm. uh with people so you're able so they can look at you and say okay you know you know shanique seems to be an okay person so mm -hmm. if she if she sends me a dm on, on linkedin i'm not offended by why is she contacting me right. why because she would have established a relationship over time i love that but what i equally uh, another a point that was made earlier is that your profile on LinkedIn is your resume but could it be as well guys that our profile on Facebook Twitter Instagram <laughs> is also yep. something that employers look at yeah can yeah, we absolutely. talk a little bit uh, about that absolutely absolutely it is um Yes. Yeah, so one thing I want to point out, Charmonique said your LinkedIn serves as your resume, right? Something I don't want people to get confused because I do get people like this where they're applying to a job on LinkedIn. The recruiter will say, okay, send me a resume. And they'll say, oh, here's my profile. Your LinkedIn profile does not replace your resume. Mm -hmm. As Charmonique said, it's just another source of your resume, but it does not replace your resume. So I want you to bear in mind. Another mm -hmm. thing, most hiring managers are checking out your social profiles when you apply for a job. Ah. In my experience as a recruiter, every person who applies for a job that I'm interested in, before I contact them, I look at their LinkedIn, their Facebook, their Twitter, their Instagram. I Google their name. I do a thorough search to make sure that who I'm contacting is who they say they are. So be very mindful because something might be lurking on your Facebook that is costing you those jobs. Exactly. And that's what I really wanted to get yeah. across to the audience today. Be who you post to be. Pun mm -hmm. intended. Okay. Drop yeah. smile. 
Be yeah. who you're supposed to be. Because as yep. Shanique rightly said, many employers right now, they're going to your social media pages to find out if what you put on your resume, if that's mm -hmm. who you really are. So those are some of the things I'd love to bear in mind. There is a question from YouTube. It says, uh, what if you have no job experience? How do I create a professional identity? I think that's an awesome question. So I can start for Shanique. I can start on that. Um, so if you have no work experience, do you have any educational experience? So for people who don't have work experience, I want you to leverage your educational experience. What does that mean? I'm sure you did team projects while you were in school. I'm sure you did a final project to graduate. So if you don't have that professional background, leverage your educational background. Show that you could work in a team. Show that you could collaborate. Yeah. Show that you could lead a project. Absolutely. And also, right. So if you don't have work experience, right, you can include experience like what you did in volunteering you know employers love to see that person's volunteer and stuff get involved in in projects in your community in group activities if you are at school and you're not the type of person that like to join clubs join clubs it helps to build your resume it fills the gap because nobody's really expecting you to just leave high school and have work experience just off the bat so ensure that you replace your work experience with volunteering experience that looks good on your resume and it shows that you are able to work in a team and you can be able to build their organization as well. Excellent point, Charmonique. I love that. I hope you took notes just now, uh, especially just ensuring that you focus on the point uh, that was made about volunteering because even though a lot of the times you want the work experience but you think that possibly you have to get paid for the work experience but I am a, I am a witness that a lot of the experiences I have to date were garnered or gathered from me volunteering and when you volunteer guess what you get your foot in the door I've heard tons of stories about persons who where they're working now, they actually started out as a volunteer. So sometimes they might put your file in a file 13 <laughs> when you're offline, but just by becoming a volunteer, giving back, it can change the whole trajectory of your life. So volunteering is, indeed is the way to go. Another quick question we want to look at uh, now is how do we identify legitimate job vacancies? So many Things are going around nowadays. How do we know if something is actually legitimate? Um, well, honey, go ahead. <laughs> um, I was going to say, like, for example, on Instagram and Facebook, there's a lot of um, profiles that are promoting jobs. Um, Charmanit mentioned, I need a job, JA, right? If, for example, one of those pages posts an open position, if the position is legitimate, it's going to be on the company's website. So I want you to double check to make sure, is it on their website? So if you see a random posting on Facebook, check the company's website to see if it is legitimate. That's one of the easiest ways to find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That. So personally for me, I normally call the company. I'm just straightforward like that because even, even if I see it and I know it's legitimate, I am going to call the company and I'm going to called HR and I'm going to ask if there's a vacancy for this position. I want to know for myself. I want to hear from the company. You don't want to blindly apply for things because even though you see it on the website, even though you see it on the, the, the company's page, you want to ensure call HR because I've had this problem already. I saw a post on Ministry of Justice website and the post gave a clear date that it's going to expire at this time and it was recent. When I call Ministry of Justice, they had no open position for, for that. They did mm -hmm. not. So you have to be very careful and you have to tread lightly because you will send your resume and you will not get a response because what? I don't know. The companies just don't know what you're applying to. So call HR, find out, call a recruiter, find out exactly. And then you will know how legit it is. 
Excellent points. And it, it, it helps also because you're doing the due diligence basically because you're calling, you're in doing your own investigation. And, and I always encourage young persons that listen, whenever you see a job vacancy, go on the website. If it's not on the website, check the social media pages. Right. If it's not there, call. It doesn't hurt to verify because what you find right. is that a lot of persons are scamming people basically right mm -hmm. and you have to just you can't be too sure and therefore you have to do your own background and in, in, when you call you can be very strategic so you want to call and say good afternoon my name is sam brown i'm re i'm going to apply for this position but i want to know if it is vacant and then there you can also ask who is the iron manager who is the mm -hmm. hr manager those things matter because when you send your resume i'm going yes. to look out for a sam brown so there you go you put yourself right at the top right there you know this person just called to find out if the position was vacant those things matter so be strategic whenever you're doing stuff like that all right mm -hmm. awesome uh, just gonna jump to another question from YouTube and then we'll go, we'll finish this section. Uh, no, there's a question that says, uh, how do I create a professional identity? I'm going to direct that to Sharmanique. I'm trying to see if I, I, I'm understanding that question um, properly. How do you create? Well, for me personally, we're living in an age of social media. And as we were talking about social media earlier, you want to ensure that the content that you're putting out there, it even though, because I know a lot of persons always say they don't understand why employers use their social media to judge them to get a job. But at the end of the day, you want to ensure that the space that you're in on social media, it is professional and it is fun. You don't have to always post serious content and stuff like that, but ensure that you're posting stuff that, you know, will look good on you. Because in truth and in fact, I would not want to hire somebody that would not represent my company well. So in creating a professional identity, you want to ensure that your social media spaces are clean. And when I say clean, you don't want to post anything or get involved in certain conversations and social media that might affect your job hunting process. Also, you want to ensure that you put yourself out there. So attend events, attend seminars, get involved in youth clubs, in youth groups. When I just started out, um, I, I joined a lot of activist group, youth groups. I get my name out there. I let persons hear my voice. I went out there and I just was myself. And it really marketed my, me, myself, and it marketed my brand also. So people will know you and people will get to know you in the long run. You can create your professional identity that way. Shanique, you want to weigh in on that? Sure, I would love for Shanique to um, weigh in. Yes, um, this was you know, what we started out with about creating an identity, right? right. Um, so as we had mentioned, the first step is assessing your skills. So one, assess your skills. What are you good at? What am I passionate at? Then you want to develop those skills, whether it is taking an online course, getting a certification, and then you want to brand yourself on social media as that person. You want to make sure that you're sending a consistent message. Is this who I am? And make sure all your social network platforms are consistent with who you're saying that you are. Awesome. All right. So we're, we're jumping now into segment three, the fix it up segments, right? No, we are on the job. We, we just ended the boat ride, right? For the job hunt. No, we want to fix up our CV or our resume. But guess what? Many persons don't know the difference between a resume and a CV. So I'm going to ask Shanique just to jump in and tell me what is the difference? Of course. So I get this a lot, right? So most, I want to say this, most job openings are going to require a resume, not a CV. A resume is a snapshot of your experience, mm -hmm. a quick breakdown of your experience. A CV is your entire academic and professional experience. This, these are not as common. These are using like academia, science, feels like those. So most job openings are going to ask for a resume. They are not interchangeable. I want you to remember that they are not interchangeable. So if you apply to a job opening with a CV that's asking for a resume, 
chances are the recruiter is not going to read it because those documents are usually longer. They're three plus pages. A resume is a, it's just a short synopsis of your experience. So they're not interchangeable. Wow, thank you for that. Sharmini, have you heard the, have you yeah. heard this before? The yes, I have, <laughs> yeah. And as Shanique mentioned, um, the CV and the resume is different. The CV, mm -hmm. of course, because CV is an abbreviation um, for the Latin word curriculum vitae. Um, and when that is translated, it means course of life. Course of life, you know, that is very long. So it goes back to the CV being a long document. Um, and the resume is just a snapshot of your skills and your accomplishment. So as Shanique rightly said, whenever you see a job posting, chances are they are requesting a resume and not a CV. So CV can range from two to eight pages. That's how long some of them normally are. Um, resumes are normally one to two pages. So you will find out that probably a lecturer would probably present a CV, someone who has many years of experience and educational background, someone like a lecturer or a principal would create a CV versus someone who has just left college or high school, they would present a resume. But ladies, I have a challenge. I have a challenge. I have a big problem. What about, right, the persons who want to show that they have five and six pages of a resume because no, they have no. volunteered, right? I, I've been the devil's advocate for that. <laughs> so I have volunteered. <laughs> My work enough place for the little <laughs> that time that God has put me on the earth, right? I have all these expensive things, wonderful awards and accolades that I've gotten over the years. And you're telling me that I'm going to have to put all of that on two pages, ladies? Yes, yep, that is, that is exactly what we are saying. Your resume should yeah. be recent and irrelevant. So if you ah. have, for example, 20 years of experience, right? Yep. If the if the the first ten has nothing to do with the job you're applying to now, take it off. Exactly. Ah, okay. Exactly. Just take it off. Just keep exactly. the, the just keep the recent ten years of experience on it, and that's it. <laughs> so and I Shani, love that. as you yes, as Shani ahead, mentioned, me. if it has nothing to do with the job that you're applying for, leave it off, and that is what we call a targeted resume. Mm -hmm. So a targeted resume is is one that is customized to specifically highlight the experience and the skills that you have that are relevant and right. notice the keywords that i'm stressing on are relevant to the job that you are applying for so it takes more to write a targeted resume than to click apply for if you're doing for a regular resume so that is the targeted resume that shanique just mentioned so you don't want to be applying for a customer service representative position and then you're going to put that you are an accountant i don't want to see that i want to see customer manager customer related work experiences that you have it makes my job easier and it makes the hiring process easier for you great so i want the persons in on youtube right now to just type these two words relevant relevant and what's what's the next r word recent what's the next r word people <laughs> okay relevant and recent because we do know yes you would have had an extensive amount of experience but guess what we want your employers want recent and relevant information and that is what can helps you to construct a targeted resume we learn term today and i cannot talk to me right about that <laughs> and so we're jumping now from the resume cv and now and we're going to be looking at how do you structure your resume versus how you structure your your cv i know you would have touched a little bit on that uh shanique and charmony but is there anything else you would probably add to both Okay, so I normally tell people, look out for keywords in job postings. So the best place to start when you're preparing to write a resume is to carefully read the job posting that interests you. So as you apply for different jobs, you should always study each job description for keywords that show what the employer is looking for in an ideal um, candidate. So include those keywords in your resume where relevant. So for example, if it is that you are applying for a job as a medical coder, and um, an employer might look for keywords like claim submission, compliance, coding. They look for words that relate to the position that you are applying for. 
you also want to review resume in your industry. So when you're crafting your resume, I know a lot of persons might study example of resumes or sample resume. Mm -hmm. Resumes are simple and easy to read. So you want to make it readable. So resumes are straightforward. This is because employers have a minimal amount of time to review your resume, so about six or seven seconds. So readability is key. And this also means selecting a professional clean font. Mm -hmm. So Arial and Times New Roman is good. You want to make it between 10 and 12. Also make it brief. So you'll notice that each section of the resume sample is short and to the point, including the summary and experience. So include only the most key and relevant information. Shani? Yes, so everything that Sharmini said, she hit it on the head with the resume. Um, as she said, when recruiters and hiring managers are looking at resumes, we take, I'm not, I'm not lying or anything, we legitimately take six to seven seconds to look at a resume. I pick it up. If I don't see what I'm looking for in those first few sentences and bullet points, I'm on to the next person. And that is what it is. So you have to make sure you're standing out within six seconds. Don't put your, your best content on the second page because I'm not making it to the mm. second page. You want to make sure that your best accomplishments and everything is on that first page and on the first half of the page, not on the bottom half, because that's the first thing that you're seeing when you open the resume. Something else I want to point out, I know sometimes we do a lot of things in our job, right? Sometimes we wear like five, six hats and we want to put everything on the resume. Do not put bulky paragraphs on the resume. No one is reading it. I'm just going to be honest. You want to make sure you're having bullet points so that I could skim easily through the resume. Something else that Charmonique mentioned was key words. When I get resumes, I have a list of things that I'm looking for. You know what I do? I do control find. And I find all the keywords that I'm looking for. If your resume does not have anything that I have on my list, I'm not going with your resume because I know that you didn't tailor your resume to fit the job description. So exactly. you want to be mindful. Wow. That, 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 yeah. yep. Listen, guys, if we don't get the, the work after this, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> because No, because what I love is, is just the strategy that you, mm -hmm. that both of you use. Uh, Shani just rightly said that she uses... Uh, she used, she searches for keywords. So yeah. if you think that, oh, well, you know, I'll get away with a printed, uh, no, she has your resume in soft copy. So what she simply does is to do a, a, a you know, a, a, a word search basically for some critical right. things. So those are some and, of the things. Mm -hmm. And also before you move on, Ruth, I also want to mention something that is very important. You have some recruiters, I don't know, Shanique, you are supposed to be familiar with this, but you have some recruiters that use an ATS tracking system. So even before your resume mm. even reaches to the recruiter, it goes through an application tracking system. And if it doesn't pass that application tracking system, then you can consider yourself not being called or shortlisted. Yep. Now the ATS system, what it does, it, it scans your resume and see exactly if it is fit, to pass through to the next stage. So you want to, again, go back to keywords in the job post and look for important and relevant information to put on your resume so it passes through the ATS system. Charmonique, I'm glad that you brought the ATS system up because a lot of people don't even realize that that's a thing. Um, in Jamaica, in particular, a lot of companies aren't using it. The larger companies, um, however, do use it. So I want people to be mindful. Yes, there are these little software things out there that's literally scanning your resume. If it scans your resume and there, you don't match the job description, it gets thrown out. But something to be mindful of, ATS systems do not read PDF. If you're applying to a bigger yeah. company, make sure you're submitting the resume through the job portal via Word document. However, if you're submitting your resume via email, submit it through PDF so that the yeah. font and everything doesn't get thrown off when you submit the resume. All right, awesome. Right, so I, I, I hope you are all taking notes, uh, taking notes, people. But guess what? I, 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 ha I have seen, I've seen the evidence that you know they're taking notes. Okay, guys. So the next question is, um, is an application cover letter relevant to your 
uh, resume? Is it, or even when you're applying for a job, is it important? Yes. I, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is very important. Um, it, it, it basically increases your chance of, of getting the job. When you're applying for a job, you want to ensure that you are telling the employer why it is that you want it, why, why it is that you want this job. You want to mention your skills. You're not repeating what is on your resume, but your cover letter basically serves as a portal for you to go through to basically push your chance up to get the job. So it is important. If it is that they don't ask specifically for a cover letter, then you don't have to send one. But most times what you want to do is send a cover letter along with your resume. It doesn't matter if you're applying in person or directly through the website, ensure that you send a cover letter. It is important unless they specifically tell you not to give them a cover letter, just a resume. I 100% agree. Just to piggyback on what you said, listen, it's 2021, we're not doing the bare minimum anymore. If the company asks for a cover letter, send a cover letter. If you really want the job, whatever they're requiring of you, make sure that you're doing it. However, when you're crafting your cover letter, I want you to keep these three questions in mind. This is what your cover letter should be answering. Why are you writing? Make sure you mention in the cover letter what position you're applying to and why you're writing right? The second is, how are you qualified for this position? So this is where you pull some skills that's relevant to the job and you add them in there and expand on them. Three, why do you want to work for this particular company? I think this is the step that most people miss. Why are you interested in this job and in this company? You want to make sure that you're highlighting that in your cover letter as well. Okay, awesome. Uh, so the next thing is, and I want to direct this to Sharmanique and then Shanique, you could probably add to it. What is the best way to make your application letter? And this really speaks about your design. Uh, how, do, uh, how do you really create your, your application uh, letter in such a way that it attracts the employee to say, listen, I need to call this person. Sharmanique? Okay. All right, so for me, I always tell persons to keep it simple um, and get straight to the point because what the cover letter does or what the application letter does, it tells a story. So the cover letter gives you an opportunity to elaborate on your story before getting the chance to interview with the hiring manager. So while you get um, the chance to exhibit your qualifications for the job and explain what makes you a good fit, an employer gets to know more about your current situation. For example, you may have left a previous employer or, and are trying to start a new career path or you're an entry-level employee who is looking to gain more experience. Your cover letter will give you the opportunity to define your personal brand and also to demonstrate what type of core values you can bring to the company. So when you're crafting your cover letter, you want to be simple as possible. You want to express your interest in the position, how you can bring value to the company and that you are looking forward to working with the company. You want to also mention probably good things about the company. This is where you researching the company ties in. You want to mention that you want to work with the company because they have a high reputation for serving good customer service. You want to mention those things and you want to tie in all your skills and how it can benefit the company. Shanique, you want to dive yes. in on that? Yes. So um, uh, Ruth, the question was, how do you stand out, right? And yes. your in your resume and your cover letter. Um, so I think a lot of times when people think about standing out, they think about covering their resume with graphics and colors and all that good stuff. No. Yes doesn't work. Um, you want to make sure that your resume is simple, easy to read, and not, when you have a lot of graphics, it takes away from the content. Your resume is for content, not for pictures or anything like that. Granted, if you are in a graphic field, like you're applying for a graphic designer position or something like that, then mm -hmm. having a more visually appealing resume is good because you're showcasing your skills. However, for everyone else, I think having a standard resume is the best that conveys your experience. I don't think that people should add pictures to their resumes. And the reason I'm saying this is because we all have internal biases. You do not know what bias that purse, that HR person has. So you want to make sure that you are limiting 
any kind of personal um, information that could you know, hinder you from getting the job. For example, adding a picture, you don't wanna add that. You don't want to add your marital status, your gender, anything like any personal information that can be used to discriminate against you, you right. want to leave it off your resume. Got it. And also, um, as Shani just said, it depends really, because if you are a makeup design, if you're a makeup artist or probably a graphic designer, um, it is okay to have, add colors because, I mean, you're applying for a graphic designer position. When I see your resume, I want to see it being bring to life. Show me that you are using mm. your skills as a graphic designer. You're a makeup artist. You want to add some colors. I want to see some pop. That really brings out something also when you're doing those, those type of resumes are called That's a targeted resume right there or application letter, right? No, that is an infographic resume. Oh That's my, called targeted. <laughs> targeted. Can I make sure one? I was trying to use my big words right there. You know, but the, the, the terminology is it's targeted. Right, right, and it's also an infographic resume, as the name suggests, graphics. So you want to, if you are in the creative industry. Right. Those type of resumes will, will be more fit, but simple and traditional always works best, always. Yep. All right, I have a quick, quick question here from YouTube. Uh, and the person is asking how many paragraphs, or better yet, how long should a cover letter be ideally? Shanique? Um, so for me, I always do three paragraphs. Um, the first paragraph is, okay, why am I writing? And I mentioned, you know, some key skills in there. Second paragraph is now you draw in the job description. So you find out what the company is looking for and you tie it and you put your accomplishments. The third paragraph for me is why do you want to work here? I want this opportunity because as Charmonique has mentioned, if the company has good customer service, you want to mention that. So I think three paragraphs is the max. You don't want to bombard the cover letter with too much information because remember, hiring managers are going through a lot of applications. So you want to make sure that it's easily read. Got you. Sharmanique, there's another question from YouTube and this, it reads, does 10 years experience make up for not having a first degree? Definitely, definitely it does. Um, so for me personally, once you, sometimes for me, I don't really, I require persons to have basic, basic qualifications. So if you're a high school graduate and probably you have a diploma, that's fine. For me, experience is key. Once you are competent mm -hmm. in the area, then it's definitely a plus for me because you can always upskill yourself once you get okay. the work. But the 10 years work experience for me, it definitely replaces probably having a bachelor's degree because you're telling me that you have years of experience and once I hire you, then you can complete the job. You have right. persons who do have a bachelor's degree and are very incompetent within the position that they're in. So for me personally, once you have the experience, once you are competent, then definitely it's a plus. And I think that's something iron managers can look into implementing, hiring mm -hmm. the person based on their competence and once they get the job, then you allow them to upskill themselves because really and truly the, the era that we're in right now, if we're being completely honest, you have to be skill based. You get your little diploma, your certificates, right. and then you, you, you move forward. Awesome. All right. So we're, we're getting there, guys. We're moving on to segment number four. Can you imagine? So now we have, we, we've gotten the gist of, you know, explaining who we are or articulating who we are. We've gotten the gist of starting the hunt for the job. We have gotten the gist about, you know, how to fix up, you know, a CV or a resume or an application letter. But we're now going to jump to the five P's. And the five P's, of course, are the proper preparation prevents for performance, a lot of mercy, I want to pay that. But guess what? Let me ask quickly, what are employers looking for in a COVID impacted job market? Shanique, I want to hear from you. 
All right. So I think now, well, we didn't expect that this was going to happen, right? So employers are looking for people who can adapt to change. Now everything is changing, right? Now most people are working from home. So mm -hmm. you have to present yourself as someone who's adaptable and willing to work independently because now most people don't have someone over their shoulder anymore watching them. So they have to be able to trust you to one, work independently and now adapt to the situation. Um, like we had mentioned earlier, there's a lot of people who are now unemployed, right? So companies have a lot more options. So you have to make sure that you are branding yourself as the best in whatever you do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Shamanique, would you like to definitely, chime in? Right, definitely agree with what Shamanique says. You have to be able to adapt because as you know, the world we're living in is currently changing and whether we like it or not, COVID seems to be here to stay for a very long time. So we have to be able to adapt to these situations. You have to be getting comfortable working at home because at the end of the day, if you do not have your health and your mental health, then there's no way you can be productive in any space at all that you're at. So ladies, carefully examining the job requirements, how do we go about then assessing or analyzing the job requirements and the job needs of a company. So, because now we want to prepare ourselves adequately in terms of for that particular job. So absolutely. how do we assess okay. that? Um, so for me, so first I want to say, right? A lot of times when people see job descriptions, they get a little intimidated. They're like, oh my gosh, well, I have these seven things that they're looking for, but I don't have the other three. I want you to make a note of this. Follow the 80-20 rule. If you match 80% of the job description, apply to the job anyways. No one is ever going to be 100% match. So if you match the job description 80%, still apply. Secondly, make sure you're reading job description to see exactly what they want. Make sure you're mentioning that throughout your resume, throughout your cover letter, and in the interview. You should be bringing in those skills from the job description in the interview. The worst thing you could possibly do is go to an interview and not read the job description because you now have no idea what this company is looking for. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. And you also, in preparing for interviews, you always want to research the company. Always research the company. I see, I've seen it all too well. Many people go on interviews and don't know anything about the company. And that is completely a no-no. Research the company and your interviewers. And this goes back to LinkedIn. You will find every, and I mean every recruiter on LinkedIn. I'm telling you, they're all there. You want to research the company and your interviewers. Practice your answer to common interview questions. You want to study the job description and know the required skill, the skills, the qualities, and the experience. You can answer question using the STAR method, that is situation, task, action, and results. So you guys can write that down, answer your question using the STAR method. And that really is, let me just weigh in on the STAR method, if times allow me. Can I weigh in on it, Ruth? Sure, go ahead. We're ready. We're waiting. I'm writing. All right. So the STAR method basically helps you to create an easy-to-follow story with clear conflict and resolution. So the first section is situation. So you want to set the stage for the story by sharing context around the situation or challenge that you face. In most cases, it's best to describe relevant work situations, but depending on the amount of directly transferable experience that you have, it might also be appropriate to discuss academic projects or volunteering works. It's also imperative to talk about specific instance rather than your general responsibility. So you should spend the least amount of time on this part of your answer as interviewers are more concerned with the actions that you took and the results that you got. So example, you want to say, in my last role as a lead designer, there was a point in time where my team was short staff and facing a significant backlog of work. The account managers were setting unrealistic deadlines, which was causing stress for my team and affecting morale. So that is the situation. You're telling the employer about the situation. The task is you describe your responsibility or role in the situation or challenge. In other words, discuss the goal or task that was set out for you. So example, as a team leader, it was my role not only to ensure that my team met our deadlines, mm -hmm. but also to communicate the bandwidth to other departments and keep my team motivated. So that is the task. 
the action part now, explain the specific action that you took to handle a situation or overcome the challenge. So example, again, I set up a formal creative request process, including timeline estimates to set better expectation. I schedule weekly meetings with account managers to discuss my team and yeah. share progress updates. I also kept my team informed so they could have some peace of mind knowing the issues were being addressed. So that is action. And the result, result is basically what was the outcome you reach through your action. So the, again, this is the example. By providing more transparency into my team's process and setting better expectation with account managers, we were able to reprioritize the design team to do this and complete everything with our backlog. So the STAR method, it works because it's an easy follow for you to set out how to answer questions when employers ask you. Awesome. All right, so I hope you guys were taking notes, right? The STAR method. And if you were listening very keenly, I want for you to type the STAR, the acronym, right? T type with me, what the acronym STAR mean, right? Type it in the chat real quick so persons who are just logging on will know what it is that we're talking about. But there's a question, ladies, in the chat uh, from YouTube, and it says here, uh, isn't it a bit redundant to state why you're writing? Uh, and this is, I guess, is linked to the uh, application letter. Why is it that you're writing and why you want to work with them? Uh, I'm going to ask Shanique to take this one. No, it's not redundant. Um... Because let's say, for example, you send a application. Most people, when they send applications, right, they send an empty email. They put nothing in it with why they're applying. The recruiter could have several positions open. So they need to know what position you are applying for. Remember, they're not just hiring for one position. So you want to make sure you're being specific. This is the job I'm applying for. It's not redundant to put why you want to work there because they don't know why you want to work there. So right. you want to tell them that you did your research on this company. Mm -hmm. And this is what intrigues you about this company, why you want this job. Absolutely. There is another question and it says, what advice would you give to someone who always applies for jobs, lot of mercy, and they've never been, well, they have been shortlisted rather for an interview, but after the interview, nothing. Shanique, you want to say that one? This person needs some real <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I get this a lot where people say they apply, then I get no call back, X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. or they go to the interview and they don't get a call back. Are you following up? That is question number one. Are you sending a thank you note? Remember, if me, you and Ruth go to an interview, right? And I send a thank you note and Ruth and Yuna send nothing. 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 At all. <laughs> Guess who's going to get the call back? Me. Because yeah. I went above and beyond to send you a thank you note. So you want to make sure you're sending a thank you note and you want to make sure you're following up. Hiring managers are busy, okay? Yeah. They are busy. They have no, numerous positions open. So sometimes they get a little backtracked, you know? So just send them a quick little follow-up email. Hey, yeah. I'm on the interview I did on this date for this position. Just wanted to see if you need any additional information from me. That could honestly just put a little pep in their step and they could say, yeah. oh, you know what? This person was really good enough. Let me call them back. So yes. you want to make sure you're doing yeah. your diligence. And as you Love mentioned that, that um, Shanique, again, following up is important. I do it all the time. And let me tell you, it works like magic. It works. And you send a thank you note. You say, hey, thank you for having me yesterday. And Shanique also mentioned something that was important as it regards to the cover letter question. Many times when um employ when persons are applying for a job they send a blank email so they don't have any email etiquette at all so they just apply for a customer service representative position you send your email you don't send your name in the subject line or the job that you're applying for or the job code so i don't know what it is because i have another thousand of applications to look at exactly. not only yours so email etiquette is important when you're applying for a job Good mm -hmm. afternoon. My name is X, Y, and Z. Please see mm -hmm. attach resume and application letter. I look forward to simple things like that matter. When you send a resume and application letter, 
thousands of other people are doing the same. And it's very hard because what I normally do is I call HR. I always call them. Did you receive my resume and application letter? Because we're working with technology. Chances are it could have bounced or something. Mm -hmm. Call them and say, did you receive my resume? What is your name? And that way they can be able to skim through and find me quick because I did put my name in the subject line. So when they type in Charmony Kinds, it will automatically mm -hmm. pop up. That is exactly what you want to use. That's a good technique. Stop yep. sending blank emails. It's a big turn off. I cannot I can agree mm -hmm. with you more. No. Another thing I want to add to that, Charmini, you said put your name in the subject line, right? Mm -hmm. Stop saving your resume as a resume. Oh, okay. your resume should Preach. be saved as your first and last name. As a recruiter, I get thousands of resumes. And if I lose yours somewhere in the pile and I can't type your name in to find it, oh well, next. So make sure you're saving your resume as your first and last name. Not save it as resume 2019. You're going to get lost in the pile. So you want to, you want to do small things to stand out. Um, and stop sending blank emails. It's plain and simple, just lazy. You have to put something in the body of the email. Email mm -hmm. is important. <laughs> Listen, Shanique, I don't know. Listen, I don't know why, but I sense in my spirit that I'm not stepping on people can't write about no. <laughs> because I can hear a lot of people in the chat right now saying they're guilty mm -hmm. of sending the resume labeled uh, <laughs> a resume <laughs> to people. And that's so true because what if your resume gets lost? Mm -hmm. And at, at, at 10 other persons have the same resume titled yep. resume. I mm -hmm. mean, come on, guys, you have to personalize your resume so persons can identify you. All right. Yep. Uh, one of the things I also want to add as well is uh, how long after the interview uh, do you follow up with, let's say, the HR manager? Well, for me, in terms of sending a thank you email, I send it the same day or 24 hours after, I want you to remember me. So I am going to send you a thank you email right away or 24 hours after. Normally when you're in the interview, you will find out that sometimes the recruiters might give you an heads up and say, look out for a call within the next two weeks or within the next one week. They will tell you if they don't, you can follow up with, follow up with them within two weeks time. You can call them. Hey, my name is Charmony Kynes. I'm checking on the status of my application. You do stuff like that. So you give them time because you have to understand that they are very busy. They are human beings and they are there are many other candidates that are applying for the same position as you. So they have to take their time to go over. Some might give you a two week span. If they don't, then mm -hmm. you can give them probably one week or two and then you can follow up with them. Awesome. All right, so now we have done the interview or even let's say prior to, right, the interview. And there's a contact number on, let's say, our resume or even in the body of our application letter. Mm -hmm. How do we remain reachable, right? Because you have a lot of persons who have 10 different number upon their resume, 10 different number, 10 different number. Ooh, why are you doing that? How do we remain reachable during this time? So first thing I want to say is you should not be listing more than two numbers on your resume. Preach. If I call the first number and you don't answer, I'm not calling the second one most likely. So I want the number that you are listing on your resume, make sure that you are answering that number and make sure your voicemail is not full. Because if I call you and I'm interested and I want to leave you a voicemail and your yeah. mail is full and I can't leave you, I'm not calling back. So a lot of people miss opportunities because they missed a call or their mailbox is full. They can't receive a message yeah. or they don't consistently check their email. Make sure you're providing a number that you're, you can be reached at and a professional email address. Yes. Yes. That professional is enough. It's in a bad girl, Shanique. It should say Shanique Richards at gmail.com or something. Along I agree. Line. Stop putting those email addresses on your resumes because no one is going to contact you. Okay, make sure it's professional. And something else, don't put your current job's email address on your resume. Create an email address for your applications. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. these are simple, simple yes. things, but guess simple. what? They mean a lot. Mm -hmm. 
right? They do. Because as, as Shanik rightly said a while ago, there are there are lots of employers who might be pretty impressed with how you would have performed in the interview, mm -hmm. but they're not gonna sit down and be constantly calling you. Nope. So you have to ensure that you have a reliable phone. Right, yes. and as she rightly said, check your voice mail because if I'm an employee and I'm calling you, your mailbox is full. Darling, there, we're moving I'm on. I'm not following you, right? And Shall let me? your email be your best friend. Always check your email, not only inbox, but check spam. Sometimes it goes to the spam folder, so you want to ensure that you're checking your spam folder and always answer your phone, guys. Always, if it is that you. And I mean, the emails, yes. oh my God, Shanique mentioned it, bad girl, Shanique, hot Ooh. girl, Rosie, one, Ooh. two, three, like, I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why you guys made those things, but it's not professional, it is definitely not, so you want to ensure that you're clear cut. Another thing that I wanted to point out is, I'm not sure um, if it's a practice for Shanique, but for me personally, I always advise persons don't put your full address on your resume. That's not something I practice. For me, it is not safe. It mm -hmm. is definitely not safe. So I normally just put Kingston, Jamaica, St. Catherine, Jamaica. So the employer then knows that I live in the parish that um, I'm applying for or around. Mm. But no, it's not a safe practice, guys, okay. because your resume can get in the hands of anyone at all. So ensure that you just put the parish, Kingston, Jamaica, Toronto, Canada, anywhere that you're applying for, just... Mm -hmm. Leave it like that. It's I fine to leave. It. Yeah. Wow. So guys, some serious, some serious nuggets are dropping here this afternoon. You know, don't pull you put your your full address at all on your resume, right? There are a lot of nuggets, guys, dropping today. But I want to ask as well too. Uh, how do you establish? I know we spoke, we touched on it a little earlier, but how do you establish an appropriate digital footprint? And I, I, and I want for you guys to kind of break down what is a digital footprint? Because no people want to like, what you mean? You, you walk on the internet? What does that no. mean? <laughs> That's not the case, guys. So the experts are going to answer that one. <laughs> Shanique? Um, so I'll start. Something that I always tell people to do, Google your name and see what comes up. Before you start applying, Google your name. And I could personally relate to this because when I was job hunting, I never knew I should Google myself. And I Googled myself and some old, some old selfie from like MySpace or something was up there on Google. And you could take that information off. So make sure that you are one Googling yourself to see what is coming up, what articles are coming up, what pictures are coming up, which one of your social media pages is coming up when you Google mm -hmm. yourself. That's very important. The second thing is, as we said, make sure that you are who you say you are. So if you say that you are a customer service professional, that should be conveyed on your resume, cover letter, and LinkedIn, and Facebook or whatever. You don't have to put your job information on your Facebook or your Instagram, but make sure that you have at least some kind of professional looking photo so that if they do find your name, it's not a, it's not a picture of you chugging a Heineken on the beach. Oh, yeah. Because for most, while we might think that that's okay, for the employer, it might not be okay. So you want to be mindful the first thing that people are seeing when they search your name. Yeah. So, guys, I immediately never... after this session, we're going to ask that you go and Google yourself. And yeah. just in case, and little point to note, your first, add your first, your last name, and asterisk and type Jamaica beside it. Because mm -hmm. I think that will sort of narrow down the search now that it you know, will, from yeah. Jamaica. Go ahead, Shamini. Right. So, Shani, you touched on some very important points. And simply put, your digital footprint is basically a record or a trail of things that you leave online. So your social media activity, the info you put on your website, your browsing history, your subscription, your photos, all those things are your digital footprint. You have to understand, guys, employers are looking on your social media pages and you have to be careful. Say who you are on your resume, on your social media page. If it is that you want to maintain your own personal life, create a different profile and use a different name, don't use your real name, use that alias, and then you can have that own personal space for yourself. But in terms of leaving something online that won't affect your job in the future, ensure that, you're, ensure that your profiles are clean. It is simple as that. You don't want to put any content out there that will affect your job at all. Because 
we are being real. I would not want to hire somebody for my company who is just plain disrespectful on social media or who is always talking bad things about people or is always cussing out other. I would not want that because you're telling me that you would display the same behavior within the workspace. And that is how I look at it. So you have to be careful the type of footprint that you leave behind. Nobody's saying that you can't have your own personal space, mm -hmm. but you can create a different profile with a different alias and you maintain that side of you. But in terms of your professionalism, ensure that you're putting the right content out there and engaging with the right people and networking. So that is how you create and maintain your digital footprint. I love, I love the point with regards to, you know, managing our social media uh, spaces. And a lot of the times when we have discussions like this, persons tend to mention the popular sites such as, you know, Facebook, Twitter, you know, all those platforms. But we tend to forget one of the platforms that tend not to meet that list. And it is WhatsApp. Oh, I see somebody cringe a while ago. You felt that one. The reason being, when somebody has your cell number, if it's connected to WhatsApp, when they add that number to a phone, everything that you share, if, you're, if you haven't privated, let's say your status or so, will definitely be, 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 be demonstrating to them, you know, what you've been up to. So whilst it is that you private, let's say you're, you're private, your, your Instagram and your Facebook, like WhatsApp kind of leave you out there. Ruth, why are you draping for, why are you draping up people today? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, 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 I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. All right. So, ladies, uh, we're, we're, we're winding down real quick. Uh, what are some of the, re uh, the research practices with regards to some of the questions uh, that we might be asked? So, for example, we know we have an interview, but where can we go to, let's say, find a possible questions that we might be asked in, let's say, the interview? So for me, I was so there's a few questions that almost every employee is going to ask you, right? Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your weakness. Mm -hmm. Why should we hire you? If you just go on Google and type in, let's say, for example, you're, you're applying for a marketing assistant position, go on Google and type in marketing assistant interview questions. Ah. It's that simple It's going to populate all the popular sites, like the Muse, all those well-known yeah. companies, they're going to have a lot of interview questions that's tailored to that specific job description and they have the answers. So yes. if you were stuck somewhere and you don't know what to say, just type it in Google. It'll give you all the answers. Just go with a trusted site. As I said, like the Muse or any one of those um, sites, they'll have the answers and the questions for you there. Yeah, indeed. And Monsters mm -hmm. also good sites that you can go on. You Repeat have the questions. Site indeed.com and monster.com those uh -huh. are good sites that you can go on and find interview questions and also answers as shani mentioned so if you really and truly want to prepare and ace the interviews those websites are really good to go on they have the practice questions right. and the answers and they will exactly they will tell you exactly how to answer these questions in the interview and all you have to do is just practice so proper preparation always prevents poor performance Right. I definitely agree. And something else that if, for example, like you go online and you're not sure, right, there's people like me and Charmonique out there who do interview coaching. So let's say, for example, you're not happy with what you saw and you're still not confident in your interview skills. We do interview coaching. So you could do a one on one session with one of us and we could walk you through it as well. So there's a ton yeah. of resources out there for you to be prepared for the interview. Right. And even if it is, uh, guys, that you might not get the opportunity to, let's say, meet with Shanique or Sharmanique, you can simply go to Google. Mm -hmm. Right. There are yeah. tons of, 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 you know, interview segments or sessions that you could possibly just watch mm -hmm. and see how people do it. Because Google, you know, many of you might not know, but Google is an actual search engine. So anything you search for, you, you will find more likely videos that will match your keywords in terms of what you're searching for. No, this is the big question, guys. The big one. The big question. Oh, let me who saw this one out. 
how do you identify or how do you pick out the most suitable attire for your interview? Right now, we know you got the swag. We know you're at like 10 fire side, right? But this is a job interview. How do we plan, we prepare our wardrobe for this interview? Shamanique, I'm going to jump to you for this one. All right. So I always say this. Um, it depends on the type of interview that you're going on first. And it depends on the type of position that you're applying for. But in terms of colors, I always encourage persons, if you have to go on the company's website and look at the company's color, also the type of color that the company has, like the team, that would also be good to wear those colors to the interview. I also recommend soft, dark colors like gray or black because those are mostly professional. And for ladies, I always tell them, listen, wear some heels or wear low heels. It makes you look more classy and professional. And it gives you that pump and that confidence when you walk through the door. So heels are definitely good to wear on interviews and always wear dark, nice colors that are not so loud. Gray and, and black works and navy blue colors like those works when you're going on interview. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Chamani. Chani, would you like to add to that? Yes. Um, so for men, I would say definitely, you know, a nice, nice slacks, um, a button down shirt, preferably like a long sleeve button down shirt. If you want to throw a tie mm -hmm. in there, as Chamani said, it depends on the position you're applying for. Right. Because if you're applying for an executive level position, you should be walking in there with a suit on. Let's say, for example, it's something where it's, a, it's an environment that's not as corporate. Then you could dress it down a little bit, maybe some khakis and a nice button down shirt. For the ladies, pretty much the same thing. I always feel more confident when I'm wearing a blazer, right? So you mm -hmm. want to throw a blazer on a nice top. Um, if you're going to wear a skirt, and I'm going to say this loud and clear for the ladies, if you are going to wear a skirt, make sure it is of appropriate length. How can you test this length? Put your hand to your side. If your skirt is higher than where the end of your tippy finger is, it's too short. So you want to make sure that you are not revealing too much because again, it's a job interview. And like Charmonique said, you want to keep it to the neutral colors. Um, and something else that's important. I know we're going to start want to smell nice and look good. Oh, and oh ton of Do not overdo the cologne and the perfume oh. because you're sitting in a room with someone else. You're drowning them. And I get this all the time. You want to make sure you keep it light on the makeup. You keep it light. Just do yeah. a nice natural beat. And the eyelashes, don't wear eyelashes that will fan everyone away, that will blow the entire panel away. Because I know ladies tend to wear those long lashes and mm -hmm. the, the, the big earrings, those are not professional for interviews. You want to go with a, a, a knob or not wear any at all. But try to be very professional and simple. It always works. So don't out outdo yourself. No heavy makeup. Try to go as natural as possible. Make sure your hair is well kept. Mm -hmm. Ensure that everything that you are wearing is just in order because you don't want to throw off the person that is interviewing you. Because some your looks really matter because trust me, when you walk in, I'm going to be looking directly at you. And if you're distracting me with your outfit, mm -hmm. it is going to play a big part. Um, it is going to affect how you move on in the hiring process. So let's say we know that there has been a tradition, especially for, you know, uh, females that, you know, back in the day, uh, being a professional female, you know, you'd probably wear stockings. Is this something in this current age? Is this something that we should still look into doing? Um, so I think it depends on what you're wearing, because let's say for me, um, I do wear stockings sometimes. It might not be like the nude ones, but it depends on what I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. I could maybe do like some black stockings. It depends. It just depends on what your outfit of choice is. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there is a wrong. It's it's not a yes or a no. It doesn't make or break the interview if you're wearing stockings or not. As right. Especially if your skirt is of appropriate length, you don't necessarily need the stockings. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make or break you. All right. So there's a question here, ladies, from uh, YouTube. And this person is asking, do you need to dress up for an online interview? And we know that. Yes, 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 you need to dress up for an online interview. It's just like going into 
a regular interview, when you are dressed up just like your child is doing online class, they are in their uniform, right? Yeah. You may you you are more prepared and you are more ready. You, are, you have a mindset to do the interview that way. So you want to ensure that you're in your professional attire just the same as if you are going on a regular interview. It is important. And you want to ensure that when you're doing online interview, you want to ensure that your space is, is noise free because persons tend to be noisy environment and it affects your interview. So if possible, you want to look for an area that you can control. Ensure that you're using natural light. Mm -hmm. So even if you have to go in a space where the, the light is neutral and you want a clutter-free environment. So if I'm doing an interview with you and your background is probably full of clothes or shoes or something, it's going to throw me off completely. So ensure that your background is clean and ensure that everything is tidy that is all ensure that you're professionally attired always just like going into a regular interview nothing changes ensure that you're dressed up imagine applying for executive assistant position and you're in your white tees and and, and probably a jeans pants or no you just not wake. Going to work. i just wake yeah. it's not going to work at all I definitely agree. I want to piggyback since we're talking about virtual interviews and now it's the age of virtual interviews, right? So yeah. as Germany said, you want to make sure you have a clutter-free background. Something else that's very important is you want to test your technology. Don't wait until the moment of the interview to sign on to Zoom. Make sure that you sign on 30 minutes before and make sure everything is working. Something else that I know my Jamaicans are having a lot of problems with, the connection bod right? So you sign on, you start the interview and the call drop. Now, what do you do? You start getting flustered. I want you to keep calm. You have to adapt in certain situations. So if you sign on with the interviewer and the call drops, mm -hmm. the next thing for you to do is probably try rejoining again. Or if they have a phone number, you call them, send them an email. You have to make sure that you're still not getting flustered because I understand that if something throws you off, it throws you off. But make sure you're adapting. Keep your phone on loud. So if they call you, you could still do the interview. Yeah. Also, and I see that, oh, go ahead, Charmini. Right. Yeah. So I was saying, although you don't necessarily need one, a headset is a good idea to have when you're doing virtual interview. Mm -hmm. So it will reduce any ambient noise and make the tone of your voice richer and clearer when you have on the headset. Also, mm -hmm. as Shanique mentioned, test your internet speed to be sure it's fast enough and use wired internet connection sometimes instead of Wi-Fi. So this is this is normally faster, smoother, and it is less likely to cut out randomly because guys, technology is unpredictable. So do a yes. complete run through at least a day before your interview to ensure that everything is up and running. Yeah, and I'd like to also add to that, ladies, as well. It's the, the preparedness uh, for the level of preparedness for the interview. For example, if you know it's a virtual interview, charge your laptop before, charge your phones before, because you don't want, while you're in the middle of your sentence, the laptop says, bye-bye, <laughs> right? And then you're left wondering what to do. So charge your devices have backup too. So let's say, for example, you're working with uh, your, your home Wi-Fi. Put data on your phone just in case. Have backup, guys, because you just don't know what could happen, all right? And, and so those are really, really great points to add and to note. We're on to segment five now, guys. So we're almost done. Can you imagine not, God? The good things are soon done. All right. So <laughs> what are some of the common interview questions, right? So for example, we know that in interviews, there are some common questions that are usually uh, asked. Now, how do we answer some of the common questions? So in your uh, line of work, ladies, uh, there, there tends to be some common questions that you ask. But how would you want, let's say, the interviewee to respond to you? I'm going to jump to Sharmanique, and then I ask Shani. Are you hearing me, Ruth? Yes, I can. Go ahead. All right. So some common interview questions, you know, tell me about yourself. Why, you, why do you want to work here? What interests you about this role? What are you passionate about? Stuff like that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when persons are answering the tell me about yourself question, they tend to dive off in some high depth personal information. You definitely don't want to do that. If you are asked, 
a question, how would you describe yourself? You want to probably answer something like this. Um, I would say that if you're applying for a security officer position, right? And you, you would say, I would say that as a security officer, I am vigilant, I am proactive, I'm committed to ensuring a safe and secure and orderly environment. In my last incident response rating, I received and you put the percentage because they love when you list numbers and stuff. So you can mm -hmm. say I received the 99% against the team average, which has been set for 97%. So I exceeded um, that rating. I like to be thorough documenting all incidents. I'm also a lifelong learner, always seeking out the latest security equipment and techniques to patrol buildings. I frequently make suggestions to management about security improvements and changes as my motivation comes from making a meaningful contribution. So you see how that answer ties in with the position that the person is applying for. So you want to answer your questions like those. You don't want to go off in some personal thing that will not be any type of relevance to the, the question that was asked. So that is how you can formulate an answer like that. What about, I'm going to jump from Sharmini now to Shanice. What about body language? How important is body language to your interview? It is very important because one, you're not making eye contact with me. I can't look into your eyes. I don't know what you're saying. So that's the first mistake that people make, right? They don't make any eye contact. You should be doing this whether you're in person or virtual. Don't just look by yourself look at the camera, you know, you want to make eye contact. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Shoulders up and you should be confident in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, if you go into interview, you're just like, that's not professional. I also want you to read the body language of the interviewer. You mm -hmm. want to make it like, a, I always say, you want to make the interview like a yeah. dance, right? Mm. One of exactly the mirror technique. You want to mirror what they are doing. So if you realize that, that the interviewer now is a little bit more relaxed, it's more of a conversation instead of an interrogation, you can become a little bit more, you follow them. Whatever they do, you kind of mm. follow them. But yeah. the way how you walk in, the way you sit, the way how your chin is up, it says a lot about you. If your chin is down, you're not making eye contact, it seems as if you're not confident. Wow. And, and, and to be honest, guys, interviewers, I have been in interviews before and I have seen where the confident person will get the job over someone who is quali even more qualified. So yes. your confidence level has a lot to do with how it is that you, you, you perform basically. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can meet all the, 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 the criteria really, but if you lack the confidence in self, Yep. Persons are going to be a tad bit uncertain where mm -hmm. that they should uh, give you the job or give it to somebody else. That is very yes. true. Yeah. And guys, also another tip. When you are doing background research on companies, you want to ensure that or you want to look out if the company has a mission or a vision statement. This can really help you in answering your interview question. So they probably ask you in an interview, why do you want to work here? And you could probably say the company's mission is to help college students pay off their student loan debts um, speaks to me. I've been in that situation and I've loved, I'd love the opportunity to work with a company that's making a difference. Finding a company with a positive work environment and values that align with my own has reminded a priority taught through my job search and this company ranks at the top of the list. Stuff like that matters because you're tying in their mission and their vision statement within your answer. And that is definitely an impressive answer to give an interviewer because they're saying this person has really done their research. That's so that right. is important. Wow. Uh, there's a question, ladies, uh, from YouTube. It says, what do you do if you don't have a reference or references uh, when it is requested? What should you do? I'm going to jump to Shanice with this one. So almost every interviewer is going to ask you for a reference. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be professional if you have no work experience, but get um, someone from like school. It could be high school, college. It could be a member of your church. It doesn't have to be 
uh, it would be good to have an employer, but if you don't have that available, that is fine. The person just has to be able to speak about you in a positive light. So pick a pastor, someone you went to school with, um, but just don't pick it like a friend. A lot of people do that. They put their friends as their references. That's not the right way to do it. Oh, um, sure. And guess what? Sometimes your friend isn't prepared to answer the questions that the interviewer will have. So if you don't have professional references, use people in your community, your church and educational background. Absolutely. I agree. And it goes back to networking. So if you are an introverted person, try to become an extroverted person when this life ends. Get to know people. Go on LinkedIn. Get to know people in your professional space and in your environment that can speak to your character. Because later down in the future, you might never know if you need that person to serve as a reference for you. Okay. There, 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 there is usually a, a, a level of reservation, ladies, that persons have, especially when it comes to asking about the salary. Listen, we're going to just cut to the chase. Yeah. We all want to know what's the money like, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't act as though y'all are innocent, okay? We want to know how much money we're going to get. Not true? Mm -hmm. So I want to hear, Sharmanique, what would be the best way to approach asking this kind of question in the interview? Well, for me, I just cut to the chase because I believe once it is that I have the qualifications and the experience for the job, I am just going to cut straight to the chase. Um, I would like to you know what is straight it's, to the chase. What all that straight means. to the chase. What I would know? like to know what the salary <laughs> expectations are like, or you can present it this way, based on my research, a person within this position or a social media manager mm -hmm. usually makes between 90 to 100K per month. Is it the mm -hmm. same here? What is the salary expectation like? So right there, you're showing that you did your research mm -hmm. on exactly what social media managers make. So based on my research on social media managers position, they made 90 to 100K per month. Is the salary expectation the same here? Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to shorten yourself. You don't want to be paid less for a position that is requiring more. You don't want to do that. At the end of the day, you will find that persons are going into jobs and getting less pay and their mental health is being affected. And once your mental health is being affected, you cannot be productive. So again, you can turn down interviews, guys, if the salary is not what you are expecting, because at the end of the day, if you go somewhere else, the salary will be much higher. So you can do your research and ask them, is the salary expectation the same based on my research? And you do it exactly like that. Wow. All right, Chanik, you want to jump in on that? So I guess I take a little bit of a different approach. Um, so you, don't, you, don't, you don't jump on it like that. No. Take For your time. me, I take, yeah, I take my time. So you want to be mindful, right? Because... Okay. Salary is a touchy subject, even though it shouldn't be a touchy subject. You should just be telling me what I'm getting paid. But sometimes if in that initial phone call, your first question to me is, what am I making? It's a turnoff for me. And a lot of hiring managers will tell you, candidates who just jump straight. To, I understand. We all want to know we're getting paid because we want money, right? But you don't want it to be the first thing that you're asking when you get that call. Mm. If, for example, you go to the interview, nine times out of 10, they will tell you what the salary is. You don't even have to ask. They are going to ask you, what are your expectations? And then they'll tell you if they could match that or not. A lot of times, especially us ladies, we don't negotiate our salary. That's one of the biggest mistakes we make. We always leave money on the table. So mm -hmm. as Charmonique had mentioned, one, do your research. What does this position pay? Two, know your value. What can I add to this mm. organization? And you then you have to convey that. So you could say to the to the interview, if they ask, what's your salary expectations? You could say, well, I'm flexible when it comes on to my salary. However, I did my research. And if I was to give you a number, it would be between 1 million and 1.2 million, right? You want to give a range. Something yes. else I want you to note, the recruiters and HR managers are going to kill me for this, but I'm going to tell you guys anyways. HR managers are there to save the company money. So if you go into the interview and they say, what are your salary expectations? And you say, let's just say example, $100,000 a month, right? 
and they could pay you 120, you just left 20 grand on the table. If you had said 100 to 120, they would then have to come back to you with an answer. But you just left that money on the table. I'm not going to offer it to you because you said, this is my worth. Mm. Yes, they have a budget. Wow, I see people sitting up. I see people sitting up right now. Like if they were sleeping on us a while ago, I yeah. see those throw like water for <laughs> <laughs> Because how many of us really have left, as you said, money on the table because yeah. we undervalued our yeah. experiences or, or or what we bring to the table. And so, guys, it's exactly. not to be arrogant, Mark. You in terms of how we, uh, you know, sell ourselves, but it's being assured in who you are and knowing your worth. And yeah, they want to gauge. That. Yes. Right, Shannon. they want to gauge how well you know your worth. So a good candidate wow. knows how much yep. their skill set is worth in the market and can share it with confidence. So to wow. determine appropriate market value factor in your level, your mm-hmm. years of experience and your career achievements, they want to know because they do have a budget, as Shanit mentioned. They are there mm-hmm. to save the company's money. So you can simply say, I'm seeking a position that pays between 75000 to 80000 annually. You can say I'm seeking a position that pays between 75,000 and 80 annually, but I'm open to negotiate mm-hmm. salary depending on benefits, bonuses, mm-hmm. of stock options, and other opportunities. So you want to approach it that way. Yep. Wow. I agree with Charmini. Woo! She just said something I want to um yeah. expand on. She said all the other benefits, right? So mm. not, a lot of times when we'll go on interviews and ask about salary. We don't think about all the other benefits. Mm -mm. How many paid time off days do I get? How many days do I get? Do I get maternity leave if I want to have a baby? You want to look at the entire package. Not just a $100,000 number. Look at the breakdown. Look at everything that you are getting. Because sometimes it's worth trading off the dollar amount for those benefits. Oh my, listen, right? Up. Oh my God. You know, I'm going to behave myself because I want to, I want to get my invisible tambourine right now. I say, listen, listen, people. Oh my God. Oh, listen, I see people um in, in YouTube land say, listen, this program, um, listen, it really, really helped me. That's what I'm seeing in the chat right now because many of us ladies, we did not know this a few years ago. We did not know that we were able to negotiate at this level because what we, I guess the reason is that we just believe that, okay, this is all we're worth. And because that's it, we just leave it, you know, we just left that at the table. Uh, I want to close out with this question though. And it says, this person is asking ladies, where do you see yourself in five years time? Usually those are questions uh, which speaks you know, about the future. Um, how would you answer a question like that? Uh, point A. Point B says, how do you uh, explain or answer rather a question linking to your strengths and your weaknesses? So I'm going to ask Shanique to respond to the five-year question. And I'm also going to ask Sharmanique to respond to the strengths and weaknesses questions. Because I've heard some people who have told me in an interview, they have no weakness. Praise Jesus. Oh, ladies. Take it away. All right. So I'll start off with the first part of the question. Where do you see yourself in five years? So they want to see if you have a plan. You don't want to walk into an interview without a plan, right? You have to see yourself somewhere in five years. So one, you want to convey what that is. I want to see myself as an, in five years, I want to be an expert. Let's say marketing assistant. I want to be an expert in the marketing industry. I see myself doing that through this opportunity with your organization. You want to make sure that you are putting in that answer that you want to grow with that specific company. Don't give a blanket answer like, oh, in five years, I just want to be a marketing manager. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you don't want to work here in five years. So I shouldn't hire you basically. So you want to make sure that you are saying you want to become an expert in whatever you do. You want to take on more managerial tasks, Mm -hmm. but you want to do it within that particular organization. Wow. Wow. I love that. I love that. Shamanique. Right. Are you guys able to hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. All right. So you were mentioning about skills, um, strengths and weaknesses, weaknesses. right? 
Yeah. All right. So during the interview process, it is likely that the hiring manager will ask you to describe your strengths at some point. Many candidates um, probably wonder how to answer what are your strengths without bragging too much mm. or risk appearing narcissistic. So you want to craft your answer with a high degree of self-awareness and mm. professionalism. So it is important to be prepared for this question and have a statement ready. So rather than just blurting out, I am detail-oriented and hardworking are merely listing off your strengths you can craft a compelling way to de deliver your story mm -hmm. while highlighting what you can bring to the position mm -hmm. when the time comes to answer the question you need to be very specific take a stock of what you believe to be your personal strengths or you can probably ask someone to help you identify what you're good at because sometimes we don't know what we're good at but somebody else can tell us what we're good at so some strengths can be creativity flexibility taking initiative dedication integration stuff like that self-control and the way how you want to craft these quest these answers, you can say my greatest strength is my writing skills. Mm -hmm. I work well under pressure and I've never missed a deadline. Mm -hmm. One specific example that comes to mind is when I was asked to complete a project that, so you want to tell a story. So you want to say one specific example that comes to mind when I was asked to complete a project that a fellow colleague forgot about. My editor didn't realize this until this, until two hours before the deadline, it was an important piece. So I got to work and with feverish precision, I was able to complete the article. Not only was it finished on time, but it was received very well by the readers of the publication. So you wow. can craft your answer like that. In terms of your weaknesses, yes. um, let me just say, <laughs> these are pretty simple things. Um, your weakness can be that you're extremely introverted. Your weakness could be that you're extremely extroverted, that you're too sensitive. But if an iron manager asks you what is your weakness, you can say I'm extremely introverted, which makes me wary of sharing my ideas in a group setting or speaking up during team meetings. I feel that I had good intentions. I just wasn't always comfortable speaking up. After my team didn't meet expectations and two consecutive projects, I decided to start making changes to get more familiar with sharing my ideas for the benefit of my team. So even though you told them your weakness, you also made mention of the fact that you're willing to improve wow, on your yes. weakness. Right. So mm -hmm. you can say I took local um, improv classes and I started trying to get comfortable discussing my thoughts. It's still a work in progress, but it's something that I've improved dramatically over the past year. So you just don't want to highlight your weakness and leave it right there. They're looking for a home. Oh my God. And add on. Yeah. Right. I love that. So they want to see if there is room for growth. Yes. Right? So it's not just to, as 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 uh, Sharmini just uh, said, it's not only good to just state what your weaknesses are, but state as well what are the things that you're doing to improve, to become better. You know, because we're not perfect, but they want to know that you have a plan in place. And so there is a there there is one more question. Uh, I think there. Let me see if I can locate this question. All right. Okay. This person uh, posted a question twice. Uh, they're asking, what advice can you give a high school graduate with eight subjects who is not financially stable to attend college because of guarantor problems? Uh, so they proceeded to secure a job, but is unable to secure a job. All right. Let me see if I can make much out of this. So basically the person is asking that, you know, uh, they have eight subjects. Uh, they're not they're not financially stable uh, to attend uh, college, of course, because they don't have a guarantor, I guess, to, you know, to secure that loan. And so they are trying to secure a job right now. How, what, what advice would you give to such a person? Uh, Shamanique? All right, so you want to always question yourself, is college really necessary right now? 
Mm. Is it is it is college somewhere that you want to go? Sometimes we go to college and we find out that five or four years after it is not what we really want to do. We are in a skilled based era, guys. Getting mm -hmm. a certificate is important. Getting something that um going to hard trust or going to mind, getting those certificates are important. You don't have to go to college. And I will stress that because sometimes people feel as though that if you don't go to college you're a failure that is not the case let me tell you i've had friends and family members who haven't gone to college and are making more money than a lot of persons it's your competence and what exactly you can do you can upskill yourself but college is not a necessity if it is that you want to go to college um i would advise you definitely to just continue and don't give up keep trying um to apply for jobs one day and also save because i mean student loans can be a way down for a lot of people so if it is that you can get a scholarship through the ministry of education that is a good avenue that you can take and you can they can help you to to secure your your educational future so you don't really have to go to the student loan bureau because really and truly you will regret it in the future trust me you definitely will so wow. rutan is here she works with moe so she can yeah. tell you about um the different scholarships that they offer down there in the tertiary I, unit <laughs> i was just gonna listen i i got you i got you because <laughs> listen right now i i think it was last year march jtech launched a scholarship website come on listen that website what rather database which is on their website so guys when this program ends go on to jtex website and search for the scholarship database listen i told them made it hurt by it because when i was going to school there was no such thing and right now you can go on to their website and you see the institution, how much money it is that they're willing to give, the organization, and all these, hello, all these good things. So, guys, make a note of it and go to JTEC's website. They're going to pin it and, uh, in the chat on YouTube so you can go on, click on that link, and get the information. The Ministry of Education as well has a, a page dedicated to scholarships. Check it out as well. As a matter of fact, youthjamaica.com, that's or website, by the way. Uh, yeah, www.youthjamaica.com. There's a designated page uh, that deals with scholarships, both local, regional, and international. So listen, we got you, and it's a partnership. That is why the YIC is here, right? And that's why JTEC is, of course, here, because we want to ensure that at the end of the day, you are ready to go higher, okay? And so, <laughs> all right, so final thoughts from you ladies as we close out. What are your final thoughts to those who have tuned in? Never give up guys, never ever give up. And don't feel bad if you don't get the job at all. There's always another job out there. Keep applying, always be consistent apply for jobs, continue, 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 just never give up. And always ensure that you network, go in spaces that will bring you higher. Because this is the Go Higher webinar session. Go in spaces that can elevate you. You want to go out there and meet the right persons. If you didn't have a LinkedIn profile starting today, sign up for one and start networking and meeting people. Go into spaces that people will clap for you. I'm telling you, it works. Put yourself out there. Let create a name for yourself. Be active on social media in a professional way. Let persons remember you. And trust me, it will make an impact. And how can persons get in touch with you, Sharmini? All right. So currently, um, my Instagram business page is the interview coach JA. It's no space. They're all adjoined. So the interview coach JA and our WhatsApp number is 876 four five eight five zero seven one that's eight seven six four five eight five zero seven one if you reach out to me and you did not get me my partner and i run the business his name is ramaria tenstead he will always be available to answer also to your questions awesome thank you so much sharonique uh, over welcome. to you shanique 
So uh, some key t- some key takeaways from today that I want you to keep in mind when you're job hunting. We know job hunting can be brutal. It can be tiring. We've all been there. Um, but I want you to just take this away. I want you to create a strategy, find out what you like, what you're good at. I want you to apply for those jobs, interview and do it again. Don't stop job hunting until you have an offer in your hand. A lot of times we stop in the middle of the job hunt because we get called for an interview and we're so excited and we put all our eggs in one basket and sometimes it doesn't work out. So continue the cycle until you get an offer in your hand. Um, I know it's hard and you know there's a lot of resources out there. So just don't give up, keep trying. Remember, if one door closed, another one will open. The interview opens the door, but your interview skills seal the deal. So I want you guys to bear that in mind today. Um, You can follow me on Instagram. My business page is Elevate Services JA. I have a lot of free resources in my bio. Please go to my Instagram page and download all the free resources. They're all there for you. So take advantage of those. And listen... The technical team here just helped you guys a while ago. They are putting the link in the YouTube chat. So you don't have to go through no trouble, no worries. We got you. (laughs) Just click on the link and you're able to connect with Sharmonique and you're able to connect with Shanique. Ladies, it has indeed been an absolute pleasure. Right now, you have caused many. You are the reason right now we're going to get the work, right? You are the reason why we're going to shell down the job interview. You are the reason, of course, where we're able to know where to find the jobs, how to apply for the jobs, and more so, how to get and keep the job. So, ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, viewers. Oh, and there's an evaluation link in the chat, guys. We want to hear from you. We want to ensure that, you know, the next time when we have this webinar, that this will up with thing, you know? So if there's anything, any suggestions that you want uh, to tell us, please click on that link, fill out the evaluation for, please do not click off that link, okay? May I watch you? (laughs) Right? So do that for us real quick. And thank you guys so, so, so much for joining the Go Hire webinar on a job hunting and interview masterclass. See you in the next series as we go higher. Big up yourselves.